I'm Mark Bickley and from the Adelaide Oval Change Rooms, welcome to The Crows Show, brought to you by Hungry Jacks, the burgers are better. Elite football can be a hard-hearted sport and player comebacks, particularly late in their careers, are rare. However, Matt Crouch has proved the doubters wrong. The former club champion struggled to break into the club's best 22 for two years, but after reworking his game, he earned back his place late last season. And his revival continues. I felt like when I came in late last year, I played my role and um, played some decent footy, so um, yeah, I wanted to carry that momentum um, into this season and hopefully I can do that. I'm definitely feeling really, really good within my body. I had some obviously yeah, some big struggles with groin and, and hip surgery. So yeah, my body's in a really good position at the moment. Um, I was able to complete virtually all the pre-season, so um, that always helps and um, yeah, my body's feeling great. Time. Like obviously everyone wants to play AFL footy and um, I was no different um, through that period so um, yeah I just wanted to contribute and help the young boys out of that level and then um, yeah when I got my chance to, to play, play well and, and stay in the team and um, yeah have, help us win games of footy that's, the, that's what we're here for. Crouch gets rid of it, snapping ball right to the teeth of goal! Crouch doing what he does well to Laird, his mate. Yeah, Laird, he endorsed me in mainstays in there for a while now, and they're obviously very good players, but, um, yeah, to get, you know, Jake Slee go through there, Luke Pedler, Joshua Shelley, and Isaac and guys like that, I reckon it's only going to benefit us as a footy club, and um, they bring something different to that mix in the midfield. They've got real speed and power, so, um, yeah, hopefully them guys can, can contribute throughout the year. What motivates me now is clearly to win, to win a premiership. Obviously, um, to represent you know, my family, and I've got a little daughter now, so um, to play for her and, and, and my family is something that really motivates me. So it definitely changes over time. I think early days, it's just to, to get out there and get, get a game of AFL footy, but um, as your career goes on, it's team success and um, playing for your family as well. Stay with us. Shortly, we'll take you into the rooms after the big game against the Cats. And later, Darcy Fogarty gets a grilling from Ebony Marinoff. And we'll catch up with fan favourite, Graham Johncock. Riley Phil Thorpe's outstanding pre-season form promised an exciting start to the year, but a serious knee injury will confine him to the sidelines for the next three months. The big man tore the lateral meniscus in his left knee in the hit out against West Coast, and after undergoing surgery, he is now resting at home. Despite the setback, the club remains confident Riley will play a key role in the back half of the season. I've had um, something similar happen to my knee for the last six years to be honest, it sort of locks up a little bit and then I'm able to unlock it and it's fine after that so I thought it was just that and then uh, yeah couldn't get it back to normal and then didn't really think much of it until the MRI and then got the call back that it was torn. It was sort of when I woke up and then found out the surgery went well, they were able to repair it, which is better for my long-term health, so that was good, but then sort of dawned on me watching the games on the weekend and um, not going into work on you know the Monday and stuff that, um, yeah, it's going to be a little while. It's a bit of a roller coaster, but i got my family around me, they've been really good support. Yeah, I guess it's just, it is what footy is, you know, it makes the highs worth what they are. Like, playing footy is so, so much fun and I love it, um, and I know it's going to be much sweeter when I get back um, from this. Um, I've been pretty lucky, haven't really had any surgeries throughout my early career, so yeah, it is what it is, I'm just keen to get back to work. Yeah, for now I'm in a brace on crutches. Yeah, sort of upper body gym four times a week, which, um, yeah, is exciting. Um, it's been really good. Um, just to come in and have a bit of banter and, um, you know, do some weights as well. You don't realise how important, you know, just doing exercises every day until you sort of get taken away from you. So, um, just made me mentally more happy being able to do stuff, um, like the upper body. And, yeah, seeing the boys has been really good. 
Mars and Harry are in rehab at the moment have sort of reached out to me and talked to me a bit, which has been really good. You know, they're both flying at the moment, so I'm pretty confident I'll be able to get back and hopefully have a big impact um, second half of the year. I'd love to have some sort of impact, whether it's sample, AFRL level, um, just help out wherever I can because we've got a really strong um, squad, so I'm really excited to watch the boys go out this weekend and I just want to help any way I can. Murphy through the traffic, gets a kick away and kicks a monster! Murphy's Law! Congratulations, 100 games to Lockie Murphy. What a story. From rookie listed player to a member of the leadership group and now his name on the locker. Right, boat. So I've got this camera here, buddy. So I need you to run around today and see how many high fives or snails you can get. Sounds good? All right. Let's put it on, buddy. Let's see yep. Sorry, buddy. I reckon Keezy Dog. Oh, Knuckles. Yeah. Knuckles me. Ah, oh, not so hard. Knuckles? No, no, no. <laughs> this is your turn now. You're going to go get some snails, right? Let's go. Who do you want? Knuckles. Knuckles, right? Snails. I oh, got ya. Can I have a knuckle? Yeah. Here you are. Snails. What? You bunny. What's that? A GoPro? What are you doing? A GoPro. Oh, oh. Oh, the boy. Snails. No. Um, can I have a knuckles? Can you have what? Knuckles. Knuckles? Snail. Oh. Ready to go, Lucky? Ready to catch it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I see it. Can you kick it back, boys? Kick it. Kick it. No, 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 kick it. No, kick it. You know how to kick it. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> oh, you're being silly. Oi, where'd you go? Hey, can I have Did you get something? Can you I... snailed everyone? Yeah. Proud of you, buddy. High five. Get the... Thanks to Toyota, we want to see your trick kicks. Outside, inside, any angle, any target. Monthly winners will receive a Crows Guernsey. The overall winner will receive an exclusive behind the scenes match day experience at the Crows Round 22 Western Bulldogs Clash. Email crowsshow at afc.com.au or post to hashtag Crows Trick Kick. Show us what you can do. On the eve of the new season, the club announced another five life members. Long-time team physio Mark Nagel was joined by former players turned coaches Matt Clark and Matthew Wright, along with current player Matt Crouch. Phil Harper, who joined the club in 1998, was also recognised for his long and continued service to many areas within the club. And I love my club, I love the Adelaide Footy Club, and I'm very, 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 very proud to be a life member. Thank you. The Crows Show has previously featured the extraordinary success of Port Lincoln's Mallee Park Club in producing a string of Indigenous champions, including Eddie Betts, Gavin Wanganeen, Sean Burgoyne and Byron Pickett. Now it's enjoying more success in the growth of women's football. With the help of Bendigo Bank, a big supporter of community footy, former Crows star and local legend Graham Johncock explains what's been achieved. Mallee Park started in 1981. Um, they've been very successful over the years here in the local competition in Port Lincoln. Uh, there's plenty of premierships. Um, we're going to have a look later on and have a look inside and have all the premiership photos and flags and all that sort of stuff. And, and also a rich history of players that's come out of here and also gone on to bigger and better things with the, with the AFL and SANFL. So yeah, there's, there's a rich history here and something that uh, our local community is very proud of. So I think the women's footy only started three years ago, um, what, 2018 or something like that. And um, yeah, it's definitely brought a lot of enthusiasm back into to Port Lincoln. 
I think um, you know, the old traditional winter sports going out the window now with women's taking over in the summertime. So you know, just things like not having our club open during the summertime. But since the women's been started, we've had the club open and just brought a lot of continuity and, and, and um, you know, excitement to the footy club and not only the footy club but the community in general. It's only getting stronger. Um, definitely the standards, you know, from the first couple of years, it's getting better and better. And um, you know, they they. Uh, get good crowds down there because it's really fun to watch and um, yeah it's, it's definitely exciting. I bumped into a few old teammates and um, you know it's good that the AFL get behind this initiative because a lot of people out in regional areas don't get the opportunity to go to, to the cities during during the winter and, and watch the watch footy games so um, to get out to give, give a bit back to the community because um, you know we're just important out here as, as people are in, in, the, in the metro areas. G'day Charlotte, thanks for the message. Good luck this season, flag from 2024 from Charlotte. Good on you and go the Crows. Check this out, Mia said, go Crows. I've been supporting since I was younger. I'm a super fan, good luck. Mia Kaliria, thank you so much. Thanks for the message. Yeah, yeah that's love back to you. On your game against Geelong, we'll be cheering you on. Love Ava and Alana. Thank you for your message. Hopefully you can beat the Cats this weekend. This one here is from Brady. Uh, she says, good luck for the season. Go Crom. Cheers, Brady. Uh, this one says, good luck for Friday. You will smash it. Thanks, Steph Watts. All right, uh, we got this one here from Lincoln. It says, go Crows, and I hope you go well this year. Thank you very much, Lincoln. Appreciate your message. Let's go Crows. This one says, go Crows, you're the best. Thank you from uh, Carlo Campanella. Hey, guys. Um, I just got this message from Scarlett. Um, at the bottom it says, from my local butcher. So it says, go Josh, you're my favourite player, XOXO. Thanks very much, Scarlett. Darcy, been added into the leadership group this year. Tell us a little bit about that and how that came upon. Yeah, it was quite surprising, I think. Um, it's all really exciting, though. It's a little bit more responsibility this year, and I think it's a step that I'm ready to take and hopefully can hold me in good stead going forward. You talk about that level of responsibility. Is that on-field, off-field? How have you found your development in leadership? I think it's a little bit of both. I think my on-field uh, leadership and voice, not necessarily performance, has been consistent, but the voice and communication has always been there. There, but um, yeah, I guess it's just being able to, to build on that and be reliable for more in games. And um, yeah, through the week, it's sort of it's pretty set. Nothing really changes. But um, yeah, it's just sort of having that responsibility. You've certainly been a mainstay of the forward line over the past couple of years and finding form and you've been known for probably the best goal kicking accuracy in the competition. What's your routine and how's it come? Yeah, I think it comes with a fair bit of luck most of the time. I sort of <laughs> drop the ball and hope it goes through like anyone else does. But um, yeah, try and do the same thing every time, which is the same amount of steps back and then the same thing going through. And yeah, luckily more times than not, it usually goes through on set shots. You've dealt with a lot of expectation, especially in younger years. Can you tell us a little bit about that and dealing with pressure? It's obviously a little bit tricky coming in as an 18 year old and sort of um, having the expectation on you, but I think a lot of the tricky stuff's the expectation you put on yourself more so than anything. You might buy into it a little bit, which then adds to what you're thinking. So when, obviously when you don't um, perform and don't deliver as well as you'd like to be, it sort of builds up and um, that takes a little bit to get used to and a little bit to, I guess, adapt to, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's just football and you can only can control what you can control. So that's something I've learnt later in my career and something that I'm sort of still trying to work on today. So, Dash, you love playing golf? Yeah, oh, it's a little bit of a love-hate aspect uh, with golf. So um, I definitely do love it. When you're playing well, there's no better feeling. It's definitely a professional sport that I wish I could do. But um, then on the flip side, when I'm playing bad, it's like cannot get off the course quick enough so 
Um, but the main thing is just going out and you sort of get a little bit of activity, you get to walk around and then you get to play with some of your best mates in the club, so you can't beat that. I'm sure you all love getting down to the golf course. Thanks for joining me today, Dust. Thank you. OK, let's look forward to the Crows' next big clash. It's against the Fremantle Dockers on Good Friday in Perth. My four big points to look out for. Number one, as is often the case, the midfield is so important. Fremantle have three All-Australian midfielders, so do Adelaide. Nat Fife has had a resurgence through the middle of the ground and he's been feeding it out to Caleb Sarong and Andrew Brayshaw. Can Jordan Dawson get involved? Can Matt Crouch and Rory Laird do what they do and win the footy first? That's going to be a big decider in this match. Number two, Fremantle Ruckman Luke Jackson. He's a really tricky matchup for Riley O'Brien because he's a jumping Ruckman. His athleticism is going to really trouble Riley O'Brien. So don't be surprised to see Riley get across the line and try and take his jump. If he can do that and then palm the ball down to the Adelaide mids, that could become a real strength for Adelaide this weekend. Number three, in the Fremantle front half, it's not a star-studded forward line, but there is one young man called Jai Amos. He's going to be a really tricky matchup for Adelaide. He's not super tall, but he's very agile and quick, so it's probably going to be a Max Michelini or a Josh Worrell. When we saw him play last time at Optus against Brisbane, he kicked four great goals and he doesn't need many opportunities to hit the scoreboard. Number four, Adelaide have to limit the effectiveness of Luke Ryan. He plays across half back, he's that loose type of player who sets up many forward thrusts for Fremantle. Whether it's Ben Keyes or Luke Pedler, whoever finds himself on Ryan has to get dangerous and Adelaide have to try and play through that player to make Ryan accountable. If not, he'll just accumulate footy and he'll set up a lot of attack for Fremantle from half back. Like Adelaide, Fremantle are also trying to jump up into the top eight after missing out last year. And that is why games like this are so important to the Crows. If they drop games like this, they give the advantage to their finals rivals. Once again this season, we're looking for our Crow in the Crowd. We're after fans who have gone to a game and posted a photo on social media using the hashtag WeFlyersOne. Also, if you're attending our game, get snapping. You could win a double pass to Toyota's Hilux Hill at Adelaide Oval. That's all we have time for on today's show, brought to you by Hungry Jacks. The burgers are better. Thanks for your company, and I look forward to joining you again next Sunday at midday on 7. Bye for now. This program is brought to you by Hungry Jacks. The burgers are better.